Okay, Couture Crafters, let's get into this card. I'm super excited about it. I'm finally doing a video for Stamplistic. Yay! Or not for Stamplistic, but using their products. They don't know I'm alive. But anyway, um, I'm using my Tim Holtz stamp platform. It's important to use a stamp platform with this technique that I'm about to do. I am placing the little shoes um, on the, the cardstock. I've got to move them over a little bit because they were being um, interrupted by the, the little rim on the platform. I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black ink. It's my favorite Copic coloring ink. It's a dye ink. And the reason why I'm using it is because I don't want to have any smearing when I color these cards. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So I am stamping, and the great thing about a stamp platform is if you don't get a good impression the first time, you go on ahead and flip it over, and you'll get a better impression the next time. I'm using Distress Oxides and my Tailored Expressions brushes to color the card. I'm going right over it. No need to be careful because I'm going to what? Dun, dun, dun. Fussy cut these out. Oh, my goodness. Fussy cutting is a bad word. That's the F word in my house, but for Stamplistic, I'll do it. So I went ahead and put down a layer of Wilted Violet in the oxides, and then I'm going to lay down Dusty Concord. I know when you do this, I'm losing all the detail of the shoes because the oxides are so pigmented. Oxide beats dye every time. Remember that, guys. Oxide beats dye every time. So it's going over. It's covering it up, but it's giving these shoes a little dimension just so they're not just one flat color. And I wanted them to kind of be grungy, but then kind of not. I started to do the black soot, and then I changed my mind. And I'm just cleaning the brushes off in between with a paper towel. I'm just rubbing it on them. So now, because I didn't move the shoes, I'm going to push this piece of paper all the way up into the corner, and it should stamp in the exact same position. This time, I'm using a pigment ink. I'm using VersaFine Clair ink. So it will go over the oxides, which is a... Um, a mix of pigment and dye. <clears throat> so we are going over so that we can get a little detail, a little more of that detail back. So now you can kind of see the stars and the buckles and things like that. So I'm going to do it one more time to make them even darker and get even more detail. And I am pushing, pushing, pushing. And I think I am pleased with this, with this print. Now I'm going to take the cardstock and flip it over. I'm using Nina 80 pound uh, solar white cardstock and I cleaned off my stamp and now with the baby wipe and now I'm going to use Memento again because I am going to be doing some Copic coloring. So I just flipped it over, pushed it all the way in that corner and now we're going to close it again. I have not moved these boots at all. We're going to leave them in this platform the duration of this video. So I'm going over it again just to get a better impression. And I don't know why. I don't know what it is about that that heel, that right heel that I couldn't get a good impression initially. But eventually I got it. Now I'm taking the best vellum ever, which is by Simon Says Stamp, which is the largest retailer of all arts and crafts, paper crafting stuff, stamps. There it is online. <clears throat> And we are stamping it on vellum. And I'm using the Memento Tuxo Tuxedo Black ink for this one. It's going to look a little splotchy. That's just the nature of vellum. You have to kind of give it a minute to dry. So now I busted out some markers. I'm using my Copics. And I'm using the warm grays. I think I used warm gray 4, 6, and 8. And I'm throwing down my first color. If you are a Copic colorer, you're probably cringing. And wondering what on earth is she doing where are her highlights what is she thinking I'm not thinking much this is not what I do I just need to color it so yes I have a bunch of Copic markers I don't know how many I have I don't know I don't think I have the complete set years ago I bought the a B C and D sets those were all that were available at the time now my understanding is that they're 300 markers and I know for sure well I don't know how many markers I have. I think there were 70 in each. So maybe I, I don't know. I don't know. But I need to get a chart and figure it out, I guess. Although what I have works just fine for me. But I'm going from the lightest to the darkest and then back again. So that's how I cope with color. I throw down a couple of layers. 
and I start with the lightest color and I usually color that all over and then I come in with the medium color and I start coloring that in whatever areas I've decided I want to be the darker and then I come in with the darkest and then I go back to the medium and then I go back to the light and that's what you're watching me do I am sure that that's probably wrong however it worked for me I mean look it looks like I have a little dimension there I guess I don't know whatever it looks all right so then I was like, oh shoot, I forgot I wanted to color the bottom of the shoes too. So I came back. I feel like I got this part right. <laughs> I just made the highlight in the middle. And I think that's okay. I really enjoyed coloring that bottom part right there. I actually enjoyed coloring. I've been Copic coloring more lately and I think I'm enjoying it. I started to color the top of the shoes and then I remembered I'm not going to do anything with that. If you guys remember my holiday album, this is some leftover paper and I am just cutting off a piece of it. Now I say that I don't keep scraps, but specialty paper, I absolutely do. I flip it around so that I have a straight edge touching the edge of the platform. And I'm using the VersaFine Clear because I really wanted it to show up dark. And I am closing it. I only needed to get the buckle. So I wasn't trying to get a full imprint of the shoe here. I just need the buckle. Because I'm going to fussy cut it out. Fussy cutting means cutting out the image. Cutting around it or cutting it out. It doesn't paper crafting. And quilting it means something different. So now I am using the, my powder anti-static tool. Because I'm getting ready to heat emboss. So I grab my Versamark clear ink and I am placing it on the stamp. Remember, we haven't moved the stamp, so it's just going to stamp exactly in the same place. Love stamp platforms for this. And I grab my Judikins Detail Fine Black Embossing Powder and I just sprinkled it all over. And then we're just going to tap off the excess. Perfect. Not a problem. Then we are going to, this is just some regular paper out of my printer. And I just fold it in in half so that I can funnel it right back into that cup because we do not waste embossing powder. I was warming up my heat gun and now I am heating up the powder that we just put and it melts and it will give me a plastic finish. It looks like plastic. I like heat embossing. My heat embossing tools just are not as close and as easily accessible as I wish they were. So I don't do it all the time but... You guys, I fussy cut the shoes. I cut the shoes out and now I'm looking at the vellum and I'm putting them together, kind of figuring out what I want to do with what. I cut out all the pieces. It's very rare to see me do that. That's how you know I think something is special if I do that or if I think somebody is special because I very rarely cut stuff out, you guys. I hate it. That's why I have a Cricut. That's why I have a brother skin and cut that I've never used. Um, <laughs> I'm showing you guys right now that in my mind, I wanted to cut out all the stars with an X-Acto knife, not my gift at all. So then I just decided to punch holes in the center of the stars. I am not a X-Acto knife savvy person. It never goes right. So instead I just punched holes in all the stars on the shoes. There are two that I actually cut out with an X-Acto knife, but I didn't love the result. I know that's not my gift. I don't know why I try it. I see like old school paper crafters bust out an X-Acto knife and it comes out perfectly. So now I'm cutting out the vellum so that it hides behind the shoe and you don't see just straight through the holes. Whenever you fussy cut, one of the tricks to making it look nice is to go around the edges of the entire piece with a black marker. It's great if you have a Tombow marker because it comes to such a fine point you can get in all the little nooks and crannies and you see I was able to push it down into the little holes so that it gets all the white. You don't want to see any white spaces. So I'm just going around the entire shoe, around the cutouts, all of that with the black marker. I go around those pieces too with black. You want to, and when you're cutting out, fussy cutting, cut on the black line. Don't cut on the outside of it, cut on the black line. It helps to hide it so that it looks like it's just part of the design. So now I am adhering the pieces that I fussy cut out. Fussy. I'm saying fussy, F-U-S-S-Y, fussy. Oh, I hate fussy cutting guys. I hate it so much, but it's cool. So I'm using art glitter glue to apply the pieces and of course my tweezers because I have super long nails and so I have tools that help me get my job done. 
love those tweezers and now I'm putting the little silver buckles on the buckles and doesn't that look cute it gives it a little something these are the busiest shoes in the world <laughs> the world's busiest shoes so I decided that I'm gonna pop those up on foam when I do finally adhere them down now we are going to stamp these again I looked at the shoe and realized the tongue needed to be a different color so I'm not looking to get a full image here I was just looking to make sure that the tongue was fully um, stamped and I'm making sure that paper is in the upper right hand corner so that way if I need to stamp it again it's in the same position <clears throat> now I'm cleaning off the stamps with the baby wipe and moving on to Copic coloring the tongue of the boot I grabbed a couple more Copic colors and I was looking at the ones I grabbed and I thought oh, I'll grab a third color. So I'm using the violets and I think I use violet 01 or 02. I think I use violet 01, violet 6, and violet 8. I don't know that it's the world's best blend or combination but it got the job done. I just needed to throw down a little bit of color. And there we go. And just a little bit more and again I'm just working my way back and forth when you see people with super nice coloring I think it's because they've done so many layers and used at least three colors to get a really nice dimensional look I see people with little itty bitty images that are still using three different colors of Copics to get some dimension in their images and I think that's the difference between people who really like to color and are really good at it and then me I uh, marked my marker a little bit so I took some hand sanitizer which will cut alcohol ink markers so if you get alcohol ink markers on your surface of some things you can remove it with alcohol or hand sanitizer so I colored them and see now I didn't need to color the buckle that was just unnecessary eventually I did just throw one color on there just to hide it in case somebody's looking at the card from the side but it wasn't necessary I just need the top and the bottom using my art glitter glue of course and I'm adhering that down directly to the shoe there's no dimension here it's just flat and there's no dimension with that heel either the heel and the base of the shoes are all adhered directly to the the boot the buckles however I use this foam tape this gigantic foam roll that I got from the stamp and scrapbook expo a while ago this is not new I have two sizes of this foam tape and I might not ever need foam tape again in my life. Really like having that roll when you need to do dimensional stuff or shaker cards or whatever. So I'm just cutting it down to size. I have little squares too somewhere. I have black squares and white square foams and there's nothing like putting a little dimension to your card. It'll really give it a little something. I really like the technique. I don't always do it, but I, I do enjoy it. So now I'm just using my pen blade to peel off the backing and plop it down on the shoe. Love that shoe. So cute. Purple boot. I could not make up my mind on the colors, guys. I had to ask, of course. I have such a terrible, I just commitment. Like I never commit to the color. And I was thinking purple, but I, I just, it just so happens that when I asked the lady said purple and I was like perfect because I was thinking about doing teal or orange or blue brown so here I'm pulling out Tim Holtz lights I bought a lot of Halloween stuff and I overbought of course and I'm glad that somebody told me to light these shoes up because I had the lights to do it so what I'm doing now is putting the shoes kind of where I think they're gonna go and now I'm going to adhere one shoe to the other so that I can place the lights. Now the vellum has been adhered to the back of the shoes already so you can no longer see all the way through the boot. Now I put the little light, the little light is like the same exact size as that hole punch that I used um, before. It's like the same exact size. So I wanted to make sure that light went directly behind the hole. And the way I did that was with these tweezers and this glue gun. I love these tweezers. They're non-stick and they're meant to, they're like meant to work with hot tools with your glue gun. So I am winding 
the wire and using the hot glue to hold it in place. And, and I'm using that poker to poke it flat. So I'm going back and forth, putting the light where I want it, and then hot gluing it so that it doesn't move at all. This took me a little while. I enjoyed it, but, you know, it was fun. But look, all those lights are directly behind all the holes. The yellow things are the lights. And then the wires, I just kind of had to figure out the easiest way to get them so that the last couple of lights were coming out the top of the highest shoe. Look, and now they light up. So cool. Love them. Now let's finish these boots up. The eyelet outlet. Super cheap. Best <laughs> best investment ever were these little black round um, half half pearls. I tell you, they I use them all the time. And I just so happen to have just enough to go down the boot. I wish that they had been just a touch smaller, but they weren't. So I'm over it. I'm using my quick pick stick to pick them up and adhere them down. Remember I went to Tall Mouse and I spent a bunch of money so they gave me <laughs> rhinestones for free, sort of. And I'm using my wax pencil to pick it up. And these are just some small rhinestones that I got. I love this size. I have a ton of them. It seems like anytime somebody wants to, anytime I get rhinestones, I always get black ones. That's my thing, black stones. I wish these were a little bit smaller too, but they're not and they work just fine So I'm picking them up and dropping them down with this little wax pencil It's not the best Pencil, but it did the trick here. This is the best that it's ever worked for me I kind of rubbed it on my finger to warm it up and then I Did not have a problem putting these on with it And then I just went over it with the back of it and just pressed them down to make sure that they were really on there good i'm using my art glitter glue to adhere them love art glitter glue it has not failed me yet and now we're doing the other shoe and i be careful when you're doing that because i almost put glue in the holes that were punched for the lights to shine through and there we are Now let's work on the background. I initially started to go in an oval and then I realized that I didn't like what was happening. I wanted the lightest part of the background to be peeking through the bottom of the shoes and I had just gone over it, so I flipped it over. I'm using Lucky Clover and I'm starting on a teal turquoise E sheet of paper and there we go. The lightest part will be underneath the shoes. Using oxides again to blend. I tell you, oxides are a faster, easier blend. It's a lot easier than trying to blend dyes. I still like blending dyes. I think they give a different color. Um, I don't even want to say more vibrant. It's just different. Because these oxides are pretty bright, depending upon what you're doing, how you're using them. I use pine needles, lucky clover, and then chip sapphire. This is Chip Sapphire here. And I really haven't found that you need to wash these brushes between switching colors. You just stay within the same color family, wipe it off on that paper towel, and it works out pretty good. Really like the color choice here, but the background was just a little too plain. I am marking because I didn't want to float these shoes on the background. So I'm marking where I want the, the ground to be. I have this stencil that I purchased with that big purchase that I did with Tim Holtz. I bought so much Halloween stuff. I'm not being extra careful. I am just going around and dropping a little bit of texture in the background, this little brick cracked wall, so it doesn't look perfect. Then I'm gonna grab a Tombow marker. I am so glad that I bought these markers. At first I was like, why do I need these? No, I needed them. And I'm going to pop the cap and just go straight down and I have made my ground. Then I'm going to color it. What I like is that because these are oxides, they kind of peek through and give that, that white-ish oxidation um, because this is a water-based marker. And also, it's not a super smooth blend. So it kind of looks like the, the floor has texture. It kind of looks like slats of wood. And that's my ground. And I make sure that that heel is on the ground so that it's not floating and I'm happy I shot my stash and there's all I have so much ribbon guys it's ugh, and it's not 
nicely put away at all. I should have bought that ribbon set that I was telling you guys about at the expo. And now I'm getting ready to build her skirt. There is a, the, the, I should have put the picture in here, I forgot to do it, where I got the inspiration for this. This a lady a year ago had done something very similar to what I'm doing and I totally am doing a redo of hers. I wish I knew her name. Um, I don't know who did it, but it was done a year ago. And I saw it at the Stamplistic booth and was like, I have to make those. I have to buy this. And gosh darn it, I hate that I did not... Um, maybe I can put it... Maybe I'll put it at the end. The end of this video, I'm going to show you guys where I got the inspiration to do this. Because she totally deserves all the credit for this design. This is not my design. This is a version of hers. I'm using, so I just unraveled some cheesecloth. This is my first time using cheesecloth. I thought it was going to come out in one nice large panel, but it didn't. It's ribbon. So I'm using my Diane Reevely shimmer sprays because, you know, why not? I've been using these a lot lately. I really like them. I like them so much, so much, so much. So I use my heat gun to dry these. Little did I know they will scorch and burn. And that's okay because this is kind of a grungy, not pristine card. But just so you know, if you hit that sucker with that heat gun just a little too long, it will scorch. I was like, what's that smell? And then I was like, why is it black? Yeah, I burned it. That's why. This is a test piece of cardstock. I love that while I'm working on my project, I just keep the scraps near me because I find a use for them every time. I adhered them down and then I wound the rest of the lights at the top of the the boots because I wanted them to show under the skirt and now I'm just cutting down a little piece like two by and oh two by one I think or one and a half and I'm just gonna cover up that so that if you look in the, under the skirt you see the background not my mechanism and now I'm gonna start building her little skirt I start with this lace and again I'm glad I shot my stash because I think it's so cute I'm using art glitter glue and my hot glue gun, a combination to put this skirt down. That art glitter glue dries very matte, very clear. You won't see it, but I needed something that I know was going to be strong enough to hold this, this skirt because I manipulate it and play with it and tuck it and untuck it and all that kind of stuff. So it required a little bit of hot glue too. So I'm fluffing out this cheesecloth. I'm letting it be ratty and a mess and I'm okay with it. I want you to be able to see through it. I don't want it to be super opaque. I mean, I'm fluffing it. I'm just playing with it. And it took a while for me to fuss with it and get it the way that I wanted it. And I know you guys didn't want to watch that. So I did three layers of with all the colors. And then I threw some lace, I think, on the top just to finish it. Cut this cardstock down to 10 by 7 because I need a 5 by 7 card. This is a big card for me. I usually don't do 5 by 7. I decided to use that new Teflon bone folder we talked about, and I like it. It did not scratch up the cardstock. It acted just like my other Teflon bone folder, but just different. It's definitely a different feel, and I'm very happy that I have both. That was a good purchase. Expensive, but a good purchase. Um, it feels different in my hands, but I like it. So I decided to adhere uh, one of those sentiment strips that I cut from the last card that I did. And I just plopped it over there on the side after I finished the skirt. I thought I needed something. And it says, you are fab. It says, you're fabulous. Aha, so cute. And now I'm going to use my hot glue gun just to seal that up a little bit. Because it's a little on the heavier side back there. Because there's a whole mechanism under that skirt. And if you hit the button, it will light up. So I'm just fussing with it a little bit and primping and picking and you guys know, let's make this envelope. This is a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock that I had. I don't know what my intentional use for this project was, but I'm cutting it down to a 10 and a half square. This envelope is oversized for the five by seven, but because it was a little on the thicker side, I just wanted to make sure that it was not too small. So I'm using the envelope for a five and a half by seven and a half card. Anytime you use a, this particular envelope maker, you're going to get a roomy envelope. I probably could have not done five and a half by seven and a half, but I did it anyway, whatever. 
Now I am using my hand to cover it up to make a shadow so that I can see the lines because it was very difficult to see on this paper. Now, if I were doing this again, I would have done this step after I stamped the shoe, I think. I don't love that you can see the background behind the shoe, but whatever. I've been really into making my own background papers or full uh, pattern papers, not background papers, pattern papers lately to match. So this is again the Tim Holtz stencil. I'm using Black Soot Distress Oxide ink and a Ranger dauber to color the back of this it did not take long at all no rhyme or reason i am just coloring in the center trying not to get any harsh lines just little circles of cracks then i decide to fold it fold it fold it i probably could have not done this part but i could have waited to fold it until after i had stamped on it but i just wanted to make sure that it fit and boy is it roomy but it closes without the top buckling. So let's bust out our Tim Holtz platform and stick this in the corner, push it all the way in. And then I wanted the boot to kind of be sitting up like the other one. Yeah, that was a fail. Totally have no clue when I make scenes, guys. Like scenes are not, <laughs> they are not my gift. I saw it in my head how I wanted it to be and this is not exactly what I wanted. So but that's okay. I stamped it. I wanted it, yeah, it's kind of, and I wanted it to be off the side, which it is. Okay. Now let's ground it. I wanted it to look like it was sitting up the same exact way the other one was, but that did not happen. So I grabbed my ruler and I'm going to draw a line. Do not go through the shoe. That would be a no no. And then we're gonna just draw the ground right there. And so it looks like it's sitting on a table. And I'm just gonna color all this in. I think I'm using the same black marker, like an N5. Then I figured I would give it a little zhuzh at the top. I wish that the card had been short enough so that the top of the, the envelope would have been the top of this. I could have kept going up, but eh, eh, let's move on. Let's, let's be done with this. So I just give it a little trim and I give it a little glue and we make sure you fold it before you put that on there, before you start pulling on your card and tearing up stuff. Fold it over and then push it down. So now we're gonna put some double-sided tape to close up this envelope. Very, very large envelope. And just grab the pen blade, and there we go. It's cute, right? It matches. I had a piece of cardstock that was laying next to me, and I figured, hey, let's put something on the inside of the card. This card is going to Brenna and Lauren. They watch with their mom. They've been supporting me for a long time, and I'm glad to finally have a project that they can have. I think they'll like this card. <laughs> So I just, I'm gonna use some art glitter glue, plop it down, no rhyme or reason, nothing really special going on there. I didn't even stamp the inside. That's okay, the front of this card has enough going on, right? I turned off the lights, and then you can see that it's lit up. Now I'm going to close the envelope. I've already written my sentiment. I might have addressed it too. I think I did. And I'm putting it in and we're gonna seal this puppy this is my favorite part this is when you know it's done I used the shimmery purple for this one and I used four little hexagons and this is a very large seal all my seals are large I like to buy them large I don't like small seals this one is a Disney seal she's gonna be pretty I still haven't gotten a perfect seal on camera yet. I don't know why. When I'm not on camera, I get good seals. This is cool, though. I like this Disney one. I need to buy more Disney seals. And there's the card all lit up. Really, really enjoyed making this. If you guys hung with me all 30 minutes, go you. And I will see you guys on the next time. Thanks.